Hi, I'm Lana, founder and designer of Lana's Llama Non-Toxic Clothing. We specialize in clothing made of organic and natural fibers. Most people do not know what synthetic fibers used to make synthetic fabrics are, unless you're a chemist. In fact, they don't even think about it, although chances are high that they wear clothing made of synthetics just about every day. So what are synthetic fibers? We need a chemistry lesson to answer this one, but synthetic fibers are made from a complex process of polymer synthesis that requires small molecules that combine chemically to other molecules to form a polymer chain or three-dimensional network. The compounds that are used to make synthetic fibers come from petrochemicals. Synthetic fibers are not grown in the soil, they are made by a lab technician using chemicals. These are man-made fibers. Here's footage of a chemist making nylon, a synthetic fiber, so you can see this process. Kind of kills the image of sexy nylon stockings, doesn't it? The sector of the fashion industry that uses entirely synthetic fibers would not exist had it not been for chemists like this guy. Synthetic fabrics are textiles made entirely from synthetic fibers. Examples can be nylon, spandex, polyester, acrylic, rayon, lycra. Synthetic fibers are generally made from synthesized polymers, which are plastics. So how do we get from the beaker, forceps, and pipe it to that polyester shirt? After the polymerization process comes the spinning process, where the liquid is forced through spinneret holes and comes out a string liquid filament like thread. Then a twisting process twists the filament fiber into a yarn. This yarn is turned into fabric and then used to make clothing. Synthetic fibers are a newer invention. Prior to World War II, clothing was all made of natural fibers. The development of synthetic fibers arose from a necessity during wartime, and I'll discuss that in another video. During the late 1800s, several European men succeeded at creating a semi-synthetic fiber, but it was Wallace Carothers, an American researcher at the chemical firm DuPont, who was the first to invent an entirely synthetic fiber, nylon. Nylon was used to replace silk in parachutes, tents, and ropes used in wartime. Interesting, in 1937, Wallace killed himself. Could it be that his exposure to toxic and carcinogenic compounds such as benzene used to make nylon contributed to his depression than his suicide? Nylon was also used to replace silk in women's stockings. How awful. And if you've worn silk stockings, you know that nylon in no way is superior to silk. This idea that nylon is better than silk was marketed by the chemical company DuPont, using famous actresses to sell it to women. It was a massive psyop built by genius marketers, a gimmick by capitalists, to sell women a toxic product. It was all very sly. Then in 1941, John Rex Winfield invented polyester, and since then we can't get away from it. Synthetic fibers make up 70% of the world's production of fibers, that's a lot. And scientists actually think they can improve nature, improve plant and animal fibers. They may come close to replicating the look of natural fibers, but they just can't recreate that magic only the force of nature can create. As someone who wears organic natural fibers, no polyester shirt has ever felt like wearing organic cotton or silk. It's the way it breathes. And although numerous medical studies have pointed out the negative impacts on the human body of those who wear synthetic fabrics, since over 8,000 carcinogenic chemicals are used to make these fabrics, I still heard people defending the use of it in clothing. They'll tell you that we need to conserve raw materials, yet synthetics come from a non-renewable resource. They're not biodegradable, and manufacturing them pollutes our air, water, soil, and wildlife. Furthermore, synthetics require oil, which requires drilling, which requires more chemicals. And toxic air pollution from fracking causes a wide spectrum of environmental and health problems. Whether you believe oil is abiotic or not, the process of retrieving crude oil is toxic using our current methods. Of course, I'm not opposed to using petroleum. I couldn't make this video without it, but when it comes to wearing it, I am. Nature has provided a non-toxic, renewable, biodegradable resource for us to clothe our bodies with, and we don't need to drill into the earth to attain it. I've also heard the argument, but we can't grow enough natural fibers fast enough to clothe the world, and so we need synthetics. This is false. We can grow everything we need. The fact is that synthetics have greatly helped to create a society of mass consumption, waste of disposable cheap goods. We don't live in a society anymore that values quality over quantity. We want it cheap and we want a lot of it, no matter the long-term implication for our children's children. Recycling synthetic clothing is another issue, since a large percentage of the textiles that we do throw away can't be recycled. 
So in the end, while synthetic fibers may have their use in certain industrial practices, and I would argue even then we should be using fibers like hemp, synthetics certainly do not belong on your body. This is a new idea in the scope of human history. So returning back to natural fibers is not something revolutionary, but something necessary for your health. Visit lanaslama.com where you'll find our organic and natural fiber clothing line. Sign up for our newsletter to hear about our latest styles. Thank you for watching.